Elevator Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Vape on Saturday. Welcome! Welcome to the show. I'm your host for the next hour. My name's Andy, known as Smoke to Vape as well. Welcome, everybody. <sighs> what a, uh, Was it sunny where you are today? It was sunny where I am. So sunny, in fact, we all went to the beach and laid on the beach and I sort of fell asleep. Hence, I'm a little bit pink. I'm not sure. I didn't notice. And I feel a bit hot and a bit sort of uh, nervous about what's to come. <laughs> yes, thank you all for tuning in. 92 of you online at the moment. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. We're going to need every single last one of you as well because we've got something quite excited planned for this evening's special event. Right. Um, apologies as well before I start tonight. Um, new kit, new monitors. One, two, three, four. Uh, that one's not really got much to do, but but still, it's still intimidating. Uh, n properly using the new software and hardware this this week, so um, bear with me, bear with me, bear with, bear with. Right, bit a big action pack show tonight, so um, lots to get on with, lots to get on with. So let me just do, do that right now. Um, but in case you didn't watch last week, uh, here's what you will have missed. No chance to count. The Twitters are just going too quickly. Hey, if you if you switched from full fat Coke to Diet Coke, that doesn't make Diet Coke a medicine. Um, it's not. It, it it's middle. Bonkers. One hundred and seventy-seven new tweets. And I clear thirty. Yeah. Do you think I've just had a nutgasm? Oh my lord, hazelnut coffee, hello. And I must say, my nutgasm continues as well, because that's still what I've got in here, and it's still working really, really nicely. The iClear 30, very good, very good. Shall we move on, though, to what's in the show tonight? Well... If we have a look here, this is what I'm going to be talking about. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, let me just go back to here. See, there's my microphone, just there. And I shouldn't really tap that. That was probably really loud. Sorry. Um, I'm a TV professional, don't you know? Um, yes. So that's a bit unsightly, and my run order's in the way. There's supposed to be a bit more desk room, but um, a bit of kit that is me makes that possible didn't show up this week. So um, sadly, sadly. We're going to have to live with that. So uh, here is um, what I'm going to be talking about in the next VT. This is the Vape Stick PCC. Um, you know, it's uh, it charges a battery. It comes with two. Um, and uh, let me play in my thoughts on it, my initial thoughts. And uh, again, I'm probably going to be driving to Cardiff. Morning. This morning I am going to mostly be using uh, this, the vape stick, uh, PCC. Um, it comes with, uh, well I've got the, the blue, blue tobacco flavour. It's got a battery in here at the moment. Basically press the button and it, it's a PCC. We've seen them before. We're seeing them again. And here they are from vape stick. So this is 24 milligrams. This is the first one of the day for me. So quite important. I'm late. Let's go. Oh my God, what's that bright thing in the sky? 
I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, it's the sun. Good lord. Could this be spring? Springing? This looks incredibly like a cigarette, I think you'll agree. Um, it's got a blue light, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it. Um, it's now 8.22, horrendously late and stuck behind a truck. And I'm going to see how long it takes for the battery to go flat. Go. Pretty good throw here though. Really nice flavour actually. Right, it's now 8.45. Clearly in Wales because I'm heading towards what looks like rain and a massive cloud. Oh, not bad clouds from the vape stick classic either. Um, still going, flavour's good, throat hits good, 24 milligrams. I'm gonna see all day if I can stick with the classic vape stick. But now I'm gonna go through a toll booth. Woo! It's 8.56 and it's still going strong, the Vape Stick Classic, and um, yeah, it's working for me, I uh, no, I haven't been tempted to pick up my other electronic cigarette, uh, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it's giving me the nicotine I enjoy. It is making me think about the whole thing that we are in an environment which is so anti-smoking and the only reason people are anti-smoking is because it causes health problems. Smoking causes health problems. So the natural reaction to people you know, when, you, you, when you're seen using whatever shape or size electronic cigarette you enjoy, their natural reaction is, oh, well, that's great, you quit. Nicotine has been demonized by smoking. As we all know, nicotine on its own is very low risk and in switching to electronic cigarettes, you've reduced your harm many, many times over. But the people that we need to communicate our love for nicotine on the most part, consider it to be inextricably linked with tobacco and death. So it's quite a hard conversion. But that's what adverts do, that's what positive press does. It's all about expressing that, and that's what we're doing, and that's what I hope smoke without fire does do as well now it's important smoke without fire has a balanced voice my experience as a vapor three years clearly demonstrates that the argument has to swing in our favor now let's face it they're banning these things so they can get a hold of them and make millions of pounds I just don't want to be a casualty of that because the people who are making them into medicines, or plan to, don't understand them. So again, I, uh, that's why expressing our angle, our side of it, our, our opinions, our experiences, 
and our research, that all needs to get out there and be communicated. And that ultimately that's what Smoke That Fire will do. Like wacky races today. It's 9.19, I've just picked it up to have a drag and the battery is dead. So from memory, um, that was, I put one on at 8.22. It's now 8.22. Yeah, 8.22. So that lasted an hour. So the question is now, will the battery that is in the PCC be charged in an hour? Also, during the last hour, I've been using it when I fancied a drag. Do I vape more at work? Because <laughs> if I do, it will be uh, quite a task for that battery to be charged. I would assume in less than an hour. And if that is the case, then I personally would need to either up my nicotine to about 42 or I'd need to carry another couple of batteries of these because these are only 150 milliamp hours and I'm getting an hour out of them so only time will tell right so last night I um, completely rewired my studio and in doing so, I thought I'd put this camera on charge. So it looks like the classic kit from Vapestick is actually gonna outlive my camcorder on battery life. So I'm gonna keep vaping this for the rest of the day and I will give you my full As you can see there, the battery didn't quite make it. But I'm going to give you my full roundup after these short commercials. iVapor, an iVapor elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Vape on Saturday. Yes, indeedy, welcome back. Right, let's have a look at this little beastie here. And it's uh, it's just here. Uh, it comes in the kit with a child safety capped tub of cartomizers, which you can see there. Um, it comes with, um, what does it come with? It comes with original at 24 milligrams, tobacco at 24 milligrams, menthol at 18, apple at 18, vanilla, at 18 and cherry at 18 and I'm on the cherry at the moment and I will just say that the the battery did last me an hour and I wasn't vaping very much but it did get me through the journey and it was the first thing I tried during the day so it is you know that 24 milligrams was delivering and
vapor reduction is you as you would expect I've been vaping this all the way through the beginning of the show and um, yeah it's it's the same as um, any PCC kit with a tiny little battery um, if you're new to vaping and you want to have something that looks like an analog um, blue light uh, then this is a pretty good gateway product really to vaping and it's so light and it does feel like a cigarette so if that's what you need to get you into it then that's fantastic um, the kit is $39.99 for an experienced vapor uh, you can get a, a larger form factor kit but as we would have seen in the interview with Michael from Vapestick in a previous program new vapors that are coming into it don't want something that looked like a from his market research that's what he said anyway so um, and one of these this, this was the, the not the same device but the similar form factor to this this was the first one that I you know a, a lookalike I bought first so um, and then moved on um, in terms of what you get in the kit you get everything you need to be able to to, to run it, um, you get obviously a, a tub of uh, of, of cartomizers. Uh, uh, they're, they're yeah, uh, and in the box it comes in a little thing like that, and then you've got a wall charger. You've got instructions as well in there that are that are actually in English as well, which is good. You get a little velveteen uh, carrying pouch. Now, in terms of how I got on for the rest of the day, because I was intending to film myself throughout the day, but my camera battery, as you would have seen, passed away, sadly. Um, I did manage to get through the rest of the day, but I did cheat towards the end of the day and dropped some 42 milligram e-liquid into a vanilla-flavoured cartridge. So uh, it did get me through the day, and I did find that the, the PCC does... A, damn good job of charging these 150 milliamp battery you know in in as much time as it takes to use it do you know what I mean to extinguish the battery for the first use and I did find that that took about an hour and you know it's it's a it's a PCC kit that I see as a gateway product it hasn't got a red light on the end and I felt fairly comfortable using it but you know, you find what you like, don't you? And if you feel that if you're new to vaping, I, I'd, you know, give give one of those a go. Why not? Righty ho. Let me just go to a quick sting, and first I've got to find it though, and then we'll move on swiftly onto the next order of business. <laughs> Those stings are getting shorter. I'm sure they are. Right, now, the bit. Let me just check. Let me just check. Yes. This is the bit you have been waiting for, I think. Okay, so, I have been working pretty hard putting everybody's fantastic videos that they've been sending to me together into a six, seven minute video, which I'm going to play you now. Now, this video is going to play a massive part in tonight's Twitter bomb! Right, okay, so uh, let me play this in for you and I'll fill you in after this. Hello, my name's Andrew. Hi, I'm Alex in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Lee here. Hi, my name's Vincent. I prefer to be called Vinny, actually. Hi there, my name's Matt. I am a vapor. Hiya. Chris again. My name's Paul, and I'm a vapor. Hi, my name's Andy, and I use electronic cigarettes. Hi, my name's Lorian. I've been vaping for two years now. I'm here to tell you my story. Hi, my name's Paul, I'm 32 years old, and basically I just wanted to tell you my story about finding e-cigs. How did I start vaping? I started vaping just over a year ago now. Christmas 2008, I had the seventh of a string of heart attacks. The seventh nearly killed me. I no longer live in England. I left there when I was 19. But 
I think it's important for people everywhere to add their voice to this debate. In 2011, I bought an electronic cigarette. And have a look back since. That was the 20th of November last year, and the day they arrived, I set it all up, and I went out in the garden and I had a couple of drags, and it worked just fine. I, I didn't have crazy, crazy things. I didn't have psychotic episodes. The second that I came in from the garden, I gathered up all of my smoking stuff, and I threw it in the bin. Initially, it was a novelty to me. It was more out of curiosity. Uh, I had no intention of quitting smoking whatsoever. I just, I wanted to give an e-cig a try, see what all the fuss was about. 18 months ago, I gave up smoking tobacco products for electronic cigarettes. It turns out I liked it a lot. I uh, stopped smoking almost immediately. Not intentionally, it was just a happy accident, a byproduct of using an electronic cigarette. I discovered them Christmas 2009, because I didn't want to smoke around my kids and I didn't want to smoke around my mum. And over a few weeks, I discovered, surprisingly, that I preferred vaping to smoking a real cigarette. I never used tobacco flavours. I, I avoided those intentionally. I recently moved to flavours because suddenly tobacco flavours just don't do it for me at all. I'm currently using 36 milligram liquids, um, peppermint. I don't worry about secondary smoke or anything like that. and. Uh... It's, it's something I enjoy. It's all because of these wonderful devices and, you know, and I'm really enjoying it. I use some other nice flavors. White chocolate raspberry is an example. And I'm 43 years old. I deserve a treat every now and then, so why not? And I'm also pleased to know that my, my sister's, um, she's also recently made the switch to electronic cigarettes. But now the EU want to take this away. The EU ban, the EU ban is scare me because I know that I would end up in cigarettes again. They want to take away my right to choose to consume nicotine in a cleaner way. But they're trying to restrict the strength down to a ridiculous level of 4 milligram. Bearing in mind there are vape on 36 milligram. These are fantastic devices and heavy-handed EU regulation is going to mean that it will turn hundreds of thousands of people to back towards tobacco. And it would be a real sad day if the EU made them into medical devices. I personally don't see them he says, as a medicine. They are not medical devices. They are a substitute for me for smoking. I enjoy nicotine. Nicotine itself is not a harmful thing. They need to know that I've found a way that I can continue to get the enjoyment I used to get from smoking with risk that is magnitudes lower. It's the smoke when you burn a cigarette, when you burn tobacco. It's the smoke that kills. I enjoy consuming caffeine in the form of a cup of tea. I drink a lot of tea throughout the day. Is that going to be suddenly turned into a regulated medicine? No, it's not. So would I recommend these? Well, yes, because the science is showing that this is a clean way to enjoy nicotine. And nicotine doesn't kill. We're not it's doing ourselves any harm. I'm living proof of that. If, if I hadn't have gone onto this and I'd have started smoking, I'd have been dead now. I get all the pleasures of smoking without all the death. And it's great. And the other day, I blew up 40 balloons without passing out, which was just incredible, and did an hour's dancing with my children. These are cool things to be able to do, and stuff that I couldn't even have dreamt of doing even a year ago, and I'm only 34. My doctor is quite happy with me vaping. Uh, he assures me that my blood pressure is normal without any medication whatsoever. I'm currently on 18 milligrams uh, per milliliter, which is it's stopping me from going back to cigarettes. Um, so I am worried if they decide to reduce that to, to four milligrams, then I'll just end up going back to normal cigarettes. If these weren't available, those millions of people would be smoking now. Smoking cigarettes and killing themselves. If the uh, EU does take them away, then uh, I can guarantee you 100% that I'll be back down the shop buying cigarettes. If the proposed European revisions are passed, I will no longer be able to use my e-cig and will most likely be forced to go back to smoking cigarettes. 
patches and gums don't do it. They just don't do it. These things do. If I want to vape, if I want to use tasty flavors, in the process extend my life, that's my choice. And they don't get to tell me that I can't do it. Nicotine is not the bad thing. It's all the other thousands of chemicals that are in cigarettes. And I wish the EU would stand up and listen to what we've got to say, make some sense, and actually do the right thing. MEPs need to understand that the poor decisions they make today will have ramifications tomorrow in the rest of the world. I've also got several other people to, in my local area to change to electronic cigarettes too, and they express similar benefits. Please don't ban them. I ultimately hope common sense prevails here and that e-cigs are removed from the tobacco products directive. Please, for God's sake, don't let the EU do what they want to do with these things. They should be left as consumer devices. All of the flavors should be left alone so that people can use what works for them. They need to be left to save lives. So there we go. That's the video that I've been sp spending until 3 a.m. cutting and then driving to Cardiff. And your comments in chat make all that worth it. And the videos that the lovely people in that video sent in, they will get name checked as well next week. Uh, I haven't had a chance to pull all the names together, but I know you by face and by name. Um, and it's been lovely spending a week with you, putting your stories together. So. We are now going to close chat and Sav is going to post into chat some tweets for you. And those tweets will feature a link to that video. Now, let me show you who we're going to be sending this to. We're going to be sending it to one person and two organisations. So there will be three tweets and um, the first will be the Daily Mail, um, the second will be Sky News and the third will be Chris Evans. Now the reason why we chose those three people two people, one person, three, two organisations, was obviously Chris Evans has got a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday drive time show and he's on Twitter quite a lot. So this will be a good experiment to see if we can reach out with the same method. Now um, also you will notice when the tweets appear and I see they have in chat, thank you very much, that um, I haven't used the EU e-cig ban Hashtag. That is because, unfortunately, because we have been so successful in getting our message out there, it has been classed, rather unfairly I think, as spam. Now we all know it's not spam. We know we've got an important message to shout out there. But what I will say is that some celebrities and some news organisations do use spam filters to stop spam getting through to them, to, to cut the clutter basically. So the, the tweets we are sending you are, 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 you know, please do send those to those three organisations. But that URL to that video is yours. It's yours to send to whoever you like. But please, the people who are watching this, whether you're watching live or on a replay, please do tweet those organisations and someone I listen to every morning and, and appreciate his hard work trying to get lots of people's messages out there and I hope if if he if he's his researchers are watching this that you know you just saw the video live on the show we're very passionate about this and we don't want it to happen 
because we know what's going to happen if it does. And nobody wants that to happen. Overusing the word happen with Andy Sutton. Right, so let's see if Twitter's going nuts, shall we? Let's. So uh, there's Twitter. Oh, there's 53 new tweets. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, cool. Well, that's kicking off nicely. It going good. Thank you very much, chat. Thank, thank, thank you. Let me just pull it back to my main camera here. Hi. And sort out over here. There's going to be a slight pause here, but you're probably all busy. You're probably all busy tweeting and things. So that's good. That is very good indeed. Now let me bring it back to which window do I want on here? I want that one. So that's back to chat now. So let's let's spend some time with chat. Um, thank you all for your lovely comments about the video. It was great fun putting it together, and um, that is exactly what Smoke Without Fire aims to do: is to get our voices out there. So, oh boy, I need some alcohol and some nicotine. Yeah. So, um, once again, I haven't tweeted. So uh, let me do that now. So let me just copy and paste. Right. I feel guilty that I'm sort of not engaging with you, but I, I know you're all busy. I know you're all busy and I love you for it. Right. There we go. So that's my, that's my tweet to Sky News gone. Now I'm doing the same again to the Daily Mail. Ma, ma, ma. One spare character on that one. So, uh, if it's your first Twitter bomb... If it's your first Twitter bomb, um, please do retweet the ones that you see. Um, because then that multiplies things by the power of us, you know, and um, a lot of people talk about being in Twitter jail and you haven't really experienced a, a Twitter bomb until you've been in Twitter jail. Twitter jail is where you tweet too much, you retweet and then it, it locks you down. It, it has a limit to the uh, amount of tweets you can send uh, in a, a part, a portion of an hour. They put it in a strange way. On, on Twitter but um, you are let out on good behavior and then you can start again and let's say if you have a company or something um, that's got another email address there's no reason why that email address because it's another entity can't have another Twitter address see where I'm going with that so uh, there are my tweets gone they are sent and uh, I thank you all now let's spend some time in the company of Daz Hi Fabers, it's uh, Darren here. I know, not the normal setup as you can see. Um, been doing a bit of redecorating going on in the house. Not even a normal camera. I'm using the camera today on the, uh, the laptop. I'm doing a diary entry and this diary entry, I want to make about two things. Is one, is mixing. And two, is um the stuff that's going on in twitter so the first thing i wanted to talk about was mixing so recently i bought the uh the contents you know to mix your own um your own juices and i've given it a try now what am i learning well the first thing that i'm learning is an a juice calculator comes in handy definitely comes in handy um, I do hear about some people who, you know, they just estimate and mix and match the contents and I tried to do that and I didn't get a lot of success and here's why. I thought I had done a perfect job of taking a 50ml bottle, pouring whatever, you know, necessary contents into it and just guesstimate basically. Or oh, how wrong I was. If you were watching Hayes Hour, you would have seen Graham. Uh, who was my guest. Now I made up a batch for him 
and I didn't try or test or anything. I mixed it up, give it a shake, added some flavour, give it to him. And either later that night or the next day, I got a, a phone call and he said, um, that juice that you made for me is really, really burning my throat and my tongue. Now, another thing that I've recently learned is I, I was really in about this thing about, you know, people being allergic to VG and giving them a sore throat and everything. So automatically I thought it was the PG that was doing it. And I just thought, oh, well, he must be allergic to PG. <clears throat> now, it wasn't until later that I was speaking to um, Kat. And Kat said it'll most likely be the nicotine. So I said to Graham, I says, look, at, come over, let me have a try. And what I did was I, I dropped a couple of drops in the bulldog bin. And yeah, the nicotine content was quite high. Anyway, I cut it down some more, you know, we got it sorted, job done. <clears throat> but if you're going into juices, especially as a starter of making them for yourself, have an easy calculator and have some measuring devices, you know, so I've got syringes and measuring cups at the same time. Um, and follow the directions. You know, let's not forget that whilst we want all this stuff to do with regulation and we don't want the limits and that taken away we need to still be sensible and with mixing that the contents that i've got in with the flavorings and everything and the batches that will make up would save me more money than if i was buying the juices directly from wherever i buy them but would that stop me from buying them? The only way it would is if I was able to recreate the juices that I like, which is only going to be a trial and error thing at the end of the day. It's not going to be an overnight thing. So until then, I probably will still buy some juices until I reach that level of competency where I feel comfortable enough to say, you know what, I don't need to really buy anymore so the next part that i wanted to talk about is just wanted to give my um my take on about the the twitter bomb i've just been absolutely flabbergasted at the response to it what started off as one tweet to one person has grew massively what I wanted to say in this diary entry was, is about people, you know, if you're standing alone as one person, you know, you don't have as much of a recognition as a group of people. And it's this group of people that are coming together using the hashtag AUESIG ban that is giving us a voice. And obviously it's very early to tell, you know, how, what that's actually doing. But nevertheless, we shouldn't stop. We definitely shouldn't stop because we're being out there and we're being seen and we're being heard. And I wanted to say to every single person that is involved in that, thank you so much. I'm seeing tweets to celebrities, to MPs, to MEPs. My tweets are being repeated, uh, retweeted. I'm retweeting other people's tweets. Um, I've got an immense new amount of followers. And I but Twitter definitely is the tool. And I can only see that being an asset to our cause. Because it's short. It's quirky. It makes a statement and it gets a message out there. If it was reams of words that one person had wrote, I don't think that the message would have been as strong. And I have to be honest that before this, I didn't think a lot of people were actively taking part. But when I seen how much this has grown, it really proved me wrong. You know what? There's there's people who have joined Twitter, 
It probably nearly sent as many tweets as me. I mean, I've sent about three and a half thousand tweets in my time in Twitter. And they, <laughs> they're going to maybe overtake me. And that's not bad. That's a good thing. It is a good thing. Um, however, I have to say, I am not and have not yet been in Twitter jail. And that's something that I'm quite proud of. When you're doing these tweets for the people that's in Twitter jail, you are kind of tweeting for them at the same time. Which is, um, <laughs> which I find quite entertaining, definitely. And look at what's happening. I mean, we've got Nikki Sinclair, MAP, on board. Um, I even heard Dr. Christian um, make a response about E6. And it's only early days. It's been, what, two weeks? If we continue, where is this going to go? It's an interesting question. It really is. It was an interesting experiment. Well done, Andy. Absolutely well done. Excellent idea. Something that started off as a trial that's proving to be extremely successful. So let's keep at it. Let's keep them tweets going, definitely. That is about all that I've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching this diary entry. Happy vaping, everybody, and I'll catch up with you soon. Well, there we go. There's another Daz's Diary. There'll be more of those coming in my shows. Uh, just watching Twitter going absolutely crackers. So, um, yes. Well done, everybody. It's happening again. So, um, thank you all. It's whizzing by me here. And I'm now in jail. Twitter jail. So, um, hello, everybody who's in jail with me. Uh, I was retweeting during that video like a crazy thing with... I was like a bird with two beaks. Right, so I've got one more thing to do at the end of the show. I've also got this um, this package that arrived for me via airmail, and I've held back. Um, um, I've looked at who it came from, and it is it is a vaping related product. So um, I'm going to crack that open a bit. But uh, I'm just um, I'm just going to spend a little bit more time with with chat just while I I try and get my other computer to do what I want it to do because it's uh, it's misbehaving because I think my, all my bandwidth has been stolen by the tweeting that's going on so um, I'm just trying to rectify a few technical problems while you lovely people in chat are chatting and tweeting and tweeting and chatting. Can I just ask chat how many people are in jail at the moment? Mm. Um, because I, I've, I think this is my third visit to jail. Um, I normally thought that if you use a web browser you sort of get round it, but um, not the case, I'm, sh I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm in jail. So um, I'm just trying to set up the next bit of the show, which is quite exciting as well. So. Um, Okay, lots of lots of me's coming up about being in Twitter jail. Yes, lots of you. It goes away. I'm, it goes away. It goes away, and then you can start again. And and all your all your friends and followers who are some of them might be vapors as well. They will be tweeting as well. Um, uh, I I'm looking into our behind the scenes Skype chat and. Uh, Dave Kitson, who is far away but still joining in internationally, um, he just posted something that sums it up and it, it just says, it's mental. Um, I'm going to ask as well, yeah, D Dave Dawn says as well that it's gone crackers. So uh, it's working. Good stuff, good stuff. I need to scroll chat down. It seems to be playing playing up this computer isn't isn't very well at the moment it seems but uh, I shall overcome I shall overcome right um, I have just clicked a button that means an awful lot to me but my computer doesn't seem to think that way as well but I'm sure it will in a second please work ready to launch yes Yes. 
I've just done something that's taken quite a bit of work as well from from all of us behind the scenes. Um, I've been dragging everybody into this, um, and let me just play this, and all we become clear. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our Kickstarter campaign for Smoke Without Fire is live. So once my computer wants to do it... Please work. Please work. Okay, I just have to click one more button. I'm clicking buttons here, sorry. It's not the most fantastic of viewing. Let me go to chat. But yes, Kickstarter is go. I'm clicking the button now. I won't show you the screen because it's got some of my confidential information on it because I'm doing this through my company and it's live. There it is. I will show you now. One second caller. There we go. It's live. I'm using the wrong mouse. Uh, if you go onto Kickstarter, not now, after the show, after the show, you can check out our page. Uh, you can see how much we're trying to raise there and how many days we're trying to try to do it in. And uh, let me just go through what we're hoping to achieve with it. We're hoping to be able to do a similar video that we played in earlier, um, featuring lots of people's stories. Um, we're trying to get uh, high caliber celebrities involved to shout our messages out. And I think tonight's Twitter bomb demonstrates that if you enough people send out a message, you can get some pretty powerful stuff out there. And what that video contains can make people think about things in different ways. So that is what we're trying to achieve. And it just needs a little bit of cat. And I say a little bit, and I know 10 grand sounds like a lot. But in terms of the amount of money it takes to produce programs, and I've been making them for 15 years, um, it does take an awful lot of skilled specialist people who, on the most part, I will be able to get mates rates, but this is their livelihood and well-being, and they're not vapors, but they are supportive of stuff that I, I believe in, and they've seen me vaping, and they want to help as well. But these things do cost money, um, and imagine that video that I played in earlier of all those people talking to camera, and it worked perfectly because it's that intimate, but to make something that looks and feels like a TV show, we need that little bit of support. And yes, and it's up. And let's I'll, I'll be following its progress on the show. And if it doesn't reach the 10 grand, then I won't hold it against anybody. I understand completely it's tough times, but vapors are in tough times as well. And this little bit of cash will be able to get us out of the situation. Now, well, it will be able to assist our cause, and that's why it's up there. That's what the Kickstarter is aiming to do. Anyway, go on to Kickstarter after the show and uh, search for uh, Smoke Without Fire in the documentary section, and you'll find it and have a read through, and, you know, every pound counts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, shall we open the mystery box? But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my not so mysterious bottle of beer because I've been looking at this thing all the way through the show and and time is actually running <laughs> I've done it again I've done it again I'm opening beer and this is also a little bit of a celebration because hey here's to everybody and a successful Twitter bomb and uh, may we be able to enjoy as adults an age-restricted product like alcohol and be able to choose for ourselves whether we enjoy our alcohol with nicotine. 
and we don't have to light it and smoke it. We can do it a better way. I'm preaching to the converted, but, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. And I've poured that incredibly badly. Look at the head on that. <laughs> I'll just let that settle. And I'm eager to um, crack open this mysterious package. Let's see what's in here, shall we? Ooh. Oh, I... <sighs> I can smell watermelon. Yeah, ooh. Okay. I've got bottles in here uh, of e-liquid. Very dark e-liquid um, from Evo, who are in the States. I haven't... Uh, 24 milligram hazelnut cappuccino. <laughs> well, if... Uh, Evo E-Liquid, who kindly sent me this all the way from America watching. You've obviously seen my shows. Another coffee hazelnut liquid. And I think I've got to give that one a go, really, haven't I? Um, what else have I got in here? I've got uh, ooh, wild watermelon. And I can smell that. It's in a very well-sealed bottle with plastic and a child safety cap. Um, actually, it might not have a child safety cap. But this is from the States. Um... No, it does have a child safety cap. So, um, yeah, 24 milligrams, 30 mil of wild watermelon. Um, what else we got? What else we got? We got crimson leaf. Ooh, that sounds nice as well. I might try that as well, but maybe later and feature it next week. And tangerine swirl, all at 24 milligrams. And this is from Evo. Hmm. Nico Pure Labs in the United States. Interesting. In New Jersey. New Jersey. Great. That is ringing a very small bell, actually. Somebody, I think, contacted me on YouTube with that. So, yes. Let me load up a, um, a 510 while I just quickly check in uh, Skype. Oh, no. Look. That isn't good. <laughs> that is not going to... I'm guessing that, that isn't going to work. Oh. Cripes. Okay. All right. I'm prepared. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, yes. Let me just play this in and uh, smoothly I'll be back with a new atomizer. I rummaged through my boxes and I managed to find another 510, which I'm going to drop some of. Uh, well, I put it to chat. Which one would you, um, which one would you like me to see reviewing? I've got uh, tangerine swirl, crimson leaf, or hazelnut cappuccino. Um, and I will also say I just played that in because I've had a lot of comments asking, and I'm looking incredibly red because I'm excited and. Um, uh, yeah, and I got to the sun today because I was laying on a beach. Uh, yeah, I will say that I played that in because people have been asking whether they can still submit their, their vaping stories. Of course you can. I need them. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I will say if we, you know, if and when the Kickstarter thing happens, then 
we will be coming out to you to film it perhaps again, but I'm not, just, just keep them coming. Just keep them coming. Brilliant. Just keep them coming. Same place. Uh, you can catch it on YouTube forward slash Swath Campaign or on Facebook forward slash Swath Campaign as well. Whew. Right, uh, how am I doing? I've got about four minutes just to do a quick, uh, which let me just have a look through. Uh, chat's gone up there again. Hazelnut, Crimson Leaf, Crimson Leaf, Crimson Leaf, Crimson Leaf. Oh, Crimson Leaf. Okay, there we go. So this is Evo E-Liquid Evolved. Evo E-Liquid Evolved. 24 milligrams, um, uh, expiry date, batch number, milliliters, 24 milligrams. Crimson Leaf. I'm not getting a lot from that. Hmm. I'm getting um, sort of shower gel, but that's because I washed my hands and we didn't have any soap, so I used shower gel. Got to go shopping tomorrow. So I'll let that soak in a bit. Wow, what a busy night. It's been fun, though. It's been fun. Uh, somebody was asking in chat, what is the beer that I have got? And it's in a wine bottle. It's Lef. It's lovely. It's lovely. I recommend it highly. Hmm. Four minutes to go. Um, I can see. Let me just uh, switch across here. Yeah, Twitter is officially broken again. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Oh, also, um, if you do happen to, if you do listen to the Chris Evans show on uh, Monday or the rest of the week, um, and you do hear something, please do get in touch. Um, we're all going to try to listen to it as well. But um, we've got lots of ears amongst us, so it would be great if we could just uh, keep an ear because we know we've tweeted those two organisations and, and Chris Evans as well. Right. Mm. Wow. Okay, Crimson Leaf is a tobacco flavour. Good throat hit. Good throat hit. It's got a, a sort of weird twang to it. It's um, quite flukury. Mm. It's got quite a creamy aftertaste, like a cream soda, but it's definitely got a, a leafy tobacco. But it's got a sort of, it reminds me of like when you sniff a tea bag. <laughs> oh, I just said, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for that. I just said tea bag. Yeah, so I would say it is, it's, it's a, a leafy tobacco. Crimson leaf. Makes sense, really. Yeah, creamy, but not, it doesn't, creamy in a, not in a weird way to go with tobacco, but it just got that smooth exhale. Right, we are drawing to a close tonight, and I would just like to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been involved in the Twitter bomb once again. Um, I've got lots of exciting stuff coming up next week as well, so please do tune in. There's lots more stuff coming up as well from Vapor Trails on Sunday tomorrow night, obviously at nine o'clock. We've got Mr. Kitson, who um, is in chat, I see. So, yes, I will have much more of a handle on the equipment that I'm using tonight. And uh, there will undoubtedly, if we're not out of Twitter bomb jail yet, there will, no, there we will be. We'll, we'll all be on parole. We will be. But um, it, there will be another Twitter bomb next week. Um, and, uh, yes, exciting times. There's lots of things happening and uh, overall, as Daz said in his diary, it's amazing what we can do if we put our voices together and, you know, MEPs coming to our way of thinking. And that will only increase and improve if we keep spreading the right message out there. And that's what Smoke Without Fire aims to do. So, yeah, that is very nice, that Crimson Leaf. Uh, thank you for selecting that for me tonight. So uh, we'll probably do the other two next week. So next week, we've got Hazelnut Cappuccino <laughs> and um, uh, Tangerine Swirl. Yeah. So that's me for another Saturday. This has been the Smoke to Vape on Saturday show or Sutton on Saturday, whichever you prefer. SOS. Again, a massive thank you for making this show the big trending thing that it is. So thank you very much, everybody. See you next week and keep tweeting.
Eye Vapor, an Eye Vapor elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Vape on Saturday. Saturday.